Good morning, my name is Steve McClellan and food for thought. It's quite interesting uh, what we know about the martial arts today is radically different from what we understood about 30 years ago. Much as what we assume regarding two-man flow drills or um, acts of physical violence or just application theory is much is much more about it now and much more understood about it now than when I first met Hunchy McCarthy 30 years ago. In 1996, I was at a management seminar with a financial institution. I got a phone call from a gentleman called Sensei Percy Shepherd. He was wanted me to come to a seminar and I'm thinking, another seminar. Oh yeah, you got to realise that I think I was 36 at the time. As far as karate do was concerned, there wasn't much that I hadn't done or wanted to do. I had been training by then at least 22, 23 years. I've been training since I was 13. I had uh, trained in most classical systems of uh, karate do and I had been on the path to look for what is the meaning and I I can remember uh, a magazine called Karate Illustrated and there was always one person in it, it was a, a guy called Pat McCarthy, that's what he was called back in the early 70s. Uh, he would write columns or people would write about his exploits and training and he was, uh, he was my favourite because he wrote about things that were different from everybody else, the history or the meaning behind things. And there were lots of writers back in the day. Um, it was, uh, you have to realize back in the early 70s, martial arts and karate exploded with the advent of Bruce Lee. So by the time I'd been in my mid thirties, I'd been there, done that. I'd been in the New Zealand karate team. I'd been to the world champs. Asian Pacifics, trained in Japan, fought and competed in Japan. I had the scars to prove it, the medals, and I just, something was missing. So when Sensei Percy Shepard says, I want to come to a seminar, I'm going, yeah, right, another one. But then he said it was Patrick McCarthy. And I hesitated. I said, I'll be there. Sh I just, in fact, I left my um, management seminar early. <laughs> I think I was taking it, but I, I needed to go to the seminar. So that's how it started. And up to that date, I had a classical diet of meat, potatoes, uh, and veg, which is basically kihon, kumite, and kata. So I go to the seminar, and there's uh, Sensei. Um, and then he was, uh, his title was Kyoshi. And... The first thing we did, because I, I knew his background as classical um, karate, and also Chinese Kung Fu as well. In fact, he used to travel all over the places and write these little exploits in Black Belt Magazine and Karate Illustrated, and I would just eat them up like mana from heaven. So here he is. And the first thing I noticed what we're doing is what was then called a two-man flow drill. Uh, Riai Tegumi, or... Um, Futari Rinzoku Gekko, or it's Tagumi Waza. It's something I'd never seen before, and just they were just simple techniques. Very chet, one here, bang. They're just very simple collecting, receiving, collecting, receiving. Uh, with a uke and a tore. It's, uh, and I thought, wow, this is different. Maybe there was a couple of schools in it that had a similar type of hand techniques and Okinawan Goji-ru or Chinese Kung Fu, but nothing like this. So that's the first thing I noticed, is that uh, I, I haven't done this before. The other thing I noticed is that the techniques in this the, the, that we were doing, they weren't against an oizuki or a yakuzuki. They were against a shove, a hook. A primal bang down on the head. They was they were just against simple, simple attacks. And and the other thing was that 
the responses were looked like some of the movements in the cutters. Check up to here. Oh. So that was really interesting. At the time, there was a wee bit of knowledge about pressure points for the Dillman system to come out. Um, if it is the Dillman system, I, there's a backstory on that that Sensei can tell you about. So uh, we were dealing with pressure points. And something that was completely different is that we were also doing locks, holds. Was this karate or was it jiu-jitsu? But the movements mirrored what the clock was in the kata. Now you have to recognize that at that, that, that time, I knew every kata and every major system, all of the Shotokan kata, Shitoru, Wadaru, the Shiai kata, the, the lot. And I pretty well had cross-referenced a lot of the techniques within those systems. So I was fanatical on understanding kata. And I was trying to figure out what is the meaning of kata. So that was a Thursday night, I remember that. And that one session blew my mind. Um, two man flow drills against normal acts of violence, uh, using pressure points and locks with techniques that look like they come from a kata. Now, I could elaborate, but there's not much time. So that night, I didn't get to sleep. I don't think I got to sleep till about three or four o'clock. I wrote everything down, everything since I talked about. Every technique we did, the 12 Tegumi, Waza drills, the lot. Memorize them off by heart. And the next day we were doing them. That was in June or July 1996. About five days later, Hunchi was due to do a seminar in Whangarei with uh, Sensei Henari Heta. And the topic was Sesankata. So I'd got a few concepts under my hat. I'd never heard of and seemed, and honestly, when I say never heard of, I've looked, I've, anything that came out, I just ate it up, but nothing ever like this. Seisan kata, seisan aragaki seisan. So the big hall there, Whangarei, probably about, I don't know, 50 people, and we started doing these techniques for seisan kata. Now, I know seisan, I know probably about four versions of it. And this one was like an eclectic version of them all rolled in as one. So the first thing I noticed is that we weren't doing techniques against, again, oizuki, yakuzuki, against a, a bear hug, uh, a strangulation. Now, I've never seen that before, where you would do um, defend yourself against what, what's we now know is a habitual act of physical violence. Nobody did that. Honestly, nobody did it for kata. It was oizuki, gakuzuki, magiri, whatever. Get them right for a kick. And the escapes or the techniques that we were using in defense of those acts of violence, they included chokes, throws, takedowns. And everybody was getting into it. Everyone was loving it. You've got all these classical karate people just in this hall thinking they're going to learn a kata. And we're doing all this other stuff. We had gojuru people, um, shotokan, shitoru, all the Chinese kung fu people. And we were all doing the same thing. It was obvious that it's, 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 it's all, all in the same. Everybody found it. And I'm going, is this karate? The, the other thing that was really astounding was that we would learn the, the technique of it. Oh, sorry. We would learn uh, um, getting attacked, defending against it, and then translating it into the kata. Now, normally, you learn a kata from the movements, and then you try and figure out what it means. But this is completely turned around. Now, I've never seen it before. I did not realize and it was just starting to dawn on me, that maybe kata was kind of jiu-jitsu, but I didn't quite get the link. Now, you might think, of, it sounds done now. It sounds like we all get it now. But honestly, 1996, nobody knew that. And you might think they did. 
some schools have reversed engineered their history that they've said that they've done that. They knew it. That, no, they didn't. So was it a jiu-jitsu seminar? So then I started thinking, well, well, I was completely blown. I was just completely blown. I, I, um, and so were a lot of people. I mean, I could go on a lot about the principles that we know now, um, things like predetermined responses, uh, pulleys, levers, class, class one, two, and three levers, entering, exiting, um, body displacement, um, concepts of tool, angle, direction, um, all these things that we know, um, receiving, impacting, capturing, controlling, you know, the combative engagement process, and all the history we now know, that's all in us. We, we just know that off by heart. Back then, no one knew any of that. And, and just those little concepts that Sensei imparted, the Tagumi drill, the kata, um, where um, the kata is actually a template for you to remember your self-defense techniques. That's all it was. Uh, I had no idea that. And, and I've been, um, like I said, in training since I was 13. If you went to, I mean, kata, we weren't told that kata was a template to remember your self-defense techniques. And and you're only seeing the middle part of the self-defense technique. You're not seeing the enter, entering or the exiting. You're just seeing the real basics of it. I understand that now, but nobody knew it. And uh, Hunchy McCarthy brought it, opened it up. Uh, I'm not aware of any others. Yes, there were some few others around the world that were kind of opening up to it, but nothing or nobody with the ex expertise or depth or of understanding and a pedigree where he's gone and actually gone to those places and trained with those people and learnt this. And... So it was a big moment. Uh, it's food for thought. you got to realise that today we're blessed. We're very lucky um, that um, Hunchy McCarthy came along. And the thing is that uh, it would have been about four months later we had him back in New Zealand. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm in New Zealand. I'm in, uh, well, just south of Whangarei. Uh, I'm in my little dojo studio. I've got all my weapons in the corner, a few certificates and that. I train, well, you train every day. I hope you do. Uh, this is where I train every day down here with my wooden man and my weapons. And I train kata every day. But it, I, 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 I've got my own favorite techniques. And, and they come from the curriculum, the Koro Uchinati curriculum. If you've seen the curriculum... It's fantastic. To me, it's very simple because I've been doing it for, I don't know, 30 years. And it's like learning everything. And from that, when you know the curriculum and you understand the concepts, you can develop your own kata, your own favorite techniques, the ones that work really well for you for most situations and put them into your own template. And I don't practice them. I don't practice my favorite techniques uh, from where to go, from how someone attacks you, you know, where you receive them, you impact them, you might capture, you put them in a control situation, choke or take them to the ground, waza, ne waza, nagi waza. No, I just cheat. I just practice the meat, the meat part because I know what comes in uh, and after. I go, all oh, right, this comes here, this comes here. It's going to strike here. It's going to do a teapot in here, slap over here, grab the throat, whatever. I just do that part. I know how it works. Now, back in 1996, no one... No one, nobody knew it. And Hunchy McCarthy busted the dam open. And like I said, we had him back in New Zealand four months later. And the, the interesting thing about this, which is food for thought, is that in July, completely blew everyone away in New Zealand. Uh, and four months is a long time in politics. I, we had him out for two weeks in 1996, November. I was trying to, and we went to seminars, and I had done a lot of work uh, getting people on board. Most of the schools, well, I was a pretty well known in New Zealand karate circles. You know, I've been involved in the, um, the politics, the, the sport karate side of things. 
But nobody turned up at our seminar, so I just couldn't understand it. And we would look at each other and go, where is everybody? And then um, Sihan Hen Henry Hitta rang a couple of people up, and he was told not to go to the seminars with, at the time, Kiyoshi Patrick McCarthy. Now, cut a long story short, it transpired that a letter from Karate Australia was sent to Karate New Zealand saying that Patrick McCarthy was a fake, a fake and a hoax and not to go to his seminars. That is really interesting. But that's what happens when somebody comes along with the real oil, with the oil. It's threatening. People's livelihoods, their, the whole construct of what they believe in is threatened with a new message, with somebody with the truth. And it's... Um, it creates a lot of anxiety. And if you're in a control situation, you don't want your students going somewhere else because they might leave you and go to that school. So it, in November 1996, it was tougher, but it took, a f and then after a while, I had sensei here 15 years in a row, every year for probably at least 10 days to two weeks each time. And we would travel around the country. After a while, Everyone figured it out. Those, and he was obviously internationally well known, so that he can't be completely deaf and blind. And we got accepted in New Zealand, and since he was pretty well, he's pretty well respected all over the place down here and in Australia. So in those early days, it was completely different. No one knew anything. And when um, Hanshi McCarthy did come out, it did blow everyone's mind things that we've never seen before. And it did take a while because it was just too radical. And uh, yeah, those early days, I could talk for hours on them. And this is just one small snippet of stuff within the KU curriculum. I'm just talking real basic stuff. Riei Tugimuaza, two men flow drills. Defending against a basic habitual act of physical violence. Someone throws a punch, a hug, a choke, okay? And using locks, pressure points, holes, takedowns. Just very, very, uh, and also the last thing is, is that kata should be tipped upside down. You train what you're defending against and then you turn it into a flow certain parts of that defense with a partner and then you turn that into a solo exercise so you can remember it which then you template and put it into a kata just those three things tagumi waza habitual acts of physical violence and the understanding of what the kata really meant let alone everything else that we know in the principles of kōru uchinari just those three things in 1996 it's pretty amazing anyway food for thought